Number two, we serve, sacrifice, and suffer for a person. We serve, we sacrifice, and we suffer for a person. It is so interesting to me as I've been reading the book of Hebrews. This week I read the whole book of Hebrews and it's a very tough read. It's a, it's a strong book, lots of doctrine and theology, but the whole book is about Jesus. But what I realized, and it was so startling to me, is that the audience for this book is undergoing incredible persecution. In chapter 10, it's, it, it indicates they're getting their property stolen, confiscated. They're going to jail. They're having to visit one another in jail. There is a lot of drama going on in this church. And yet the author, who knows about the drama, clearly because he, he acknowledges it, is not addressing the drama directly. He is teaching them about the superiority of Jesus. And I just wondered at this, and I've been doing a study of many of the books of the New Testament because I know the church was born in adversity. What are the church leaders saying to the people who are living in adversity? And in almost every case, they're talking about Jesus, 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 Jesus. And in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 3, the author says this, consider him, Jesus. He's telling these people who are suffering and struggling, he's saying, weigh yourself against Jesus. Ponder Jesus and weigh yourself against him. Compare yourself to him. This is the only place that I know of where we would encourage someone to compare themselves with someone else. The author is saying, compare yourself to Jesus, who has endured so much hostility at the hands of sinners against himself. Compare yourself to him so that you don't lose heart and grow weary. Then he adds, for you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood. Oh, he did not give them a soft shoulder. He was not, he didn't jump in the boat of self-pity with them. He said, I understand you're going through trials and difficulty. Consider Jesus, serve, sacrifice, suffer for Jesus. For Jesus, consider him who endured so much hostility at the hands of sinners so you don't grow weary and lose heart. We serve, we suffer, we're willing to sacrifice for a person who has sacrificed infinitely more than we ever will. Awesome. Number three, we are even willing to die for a person. Not just sacrifice and suffer, but die, give our lives. The whole history of the Christian uh, church is a, a history of martyrdom. 11 of the 12 founding members died a horrible death of martyrdom. John was exiled on Patmos. He's the only one who we don't think died a martyr's death, but he was tortured and persecuted horribly. Today, we know that there are many believers giving their lives for their faith, maybe as many today as ever in history. The history of the Christian church is that Jesus has been persecuted and we will be persecuted. Paul said, if you live righteously in Christ Jesus, you will suffer. It's a given. Our nation has not known much suffering. But friends, buckle up. Buckle up. I'm not a prophet and I'm not prophesying here. I'm just looking at the trends. But guess what? We are willing to even die to give our lives for a person. For a person. Jesus. Now